Welcome to the fifth episode of the second season of Newcline Radio. I'm your host, Eric Fred Nicholson. And I'm your host, Dylan Wilma. And we're broadcasting live from our bipolar city, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, what, what day is it, Dylan? I don't know, Eric. Let's check out the Book of Days! Whoa! Whoa! Well, let's see. Today... A lot of stuff. This There's season. a lot of birthdays that we're going to rip through. Okay, All let's right. Go. Starting 1902, Ray Kroc. The McDonald's guy. Right. 1947, Brian Johnson. Uh, who's he? ACDC. Oh, hello. Yeah. The guy from ACDC. Yeah, black and black and stuff. Sorry. <laughs> 1943, Steve Miller. Uh, Steve Miller fan. Yes. 1957, Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac. <laughs> Bernie Mac show. <laughs> Uh, 1958, Neil deGrasse Tyson. The astrophysicist from New York. That, who just right. who said, who uh, made Pluto not a planet. And finally, 1974, Colin Malloy. Decemberist. Yes. That's pretty good. What well, that's not it, though. That's, um, just birthdays. I uh, see. Also today, in 1962, the very first James Bond movie ever came out. Oh. Dr. No with the poor Sean Connery. <laughs> very good movie. I'd recommend it. All right, and... and today, also the day of the day on this day today, is Prostitute Day. Woohoo! Yeah! Yeah, well... Even though it's illegal, so... Yeah, I'm going over don't, Do not celebrate. We here at Meepod Radio do not condone, you know, do not take any responsibility for anyone going on getting a prostitute today. Look, but do not touch. <laughs> Good way to put it. Uh, now let me know what day it is, and it's a lot of people's birthdays. It's, it's review, review time! time. This first album was requested by my friend Travis from the geology department. The group is to hold steady. The album is Heaven Is Whenever. What'd you think? It was a good album. Mm -hmm. I mean, it had... I love the guitars, uh, the guitar solos. Yeah. There were a lot of solos throughout the, throughout the entire uh, album. I like the lyrics. The lyrics were funny. They were serious at points. They talked a lot about heaven and God. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I love the harmonies and the backup vocalists. Mm -hmm. uh, they're from Minneapolis, which you know you don't hear many uh, people from Minneapolis. No, nowadays. Paul, except for you know like pr apparently pr you know Prince is from there, and Bob. Bob, and uh, yeah, uh, we all he all the singer also has an interesting kind of voice. We, we don't know who it, we don't know who it, he sounds like somebody. Yeah. We don't know who it sounds like. So if you want to come, if you want to listen to it, listen to the, the singer, and then comment below about who you think it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it would sound like bare naked ladies, but he didn't, didn't think, think so. so. Not as much. But anyway, uh, we'll leave that to you. The viewer. Um. Yeah. That was all I had for the album in general. What'd you have? Yeah. You know, I didn't have too much beyond that. The voice. Um. But no, I really don't have too much. You know, I probably compared to describe my three favorite songs. Oh, speaking of which, what are your three favorite songs, Dylan? Number one would be The Sweet Part of the City. This is the first song. Love that opening with the slide guitar. The guitar continues through the entire song. It's very, uh, feels like you're down in the country. Very nice and slow. Uh, two would be The Weekenders. This has um, the great line. The theme of this party is the industrial age, and you came as a train wreck. Yeah, I love, love that. <laughs> that was good. And again, like, kind of exemplified the lyrics. And third probably be uh, Hurricane J. That was their most poppy one, I thought. Yeah, not an insult. It's, no, uh, it's... light. Um, I don't know, I could dance. <laughs> get jiggy with this. Um, wow, okay. You don't have to get jiggy with the, with the whole steady song. Very Good enough. Know. And how about you? My three, fi my three favorites were, uh, first one was Soft in the Center. I liked all the reasons I said before about why the album was good. This personified that. Um, my second was A Slight Discomfort. Uh, I, the drums were great on that. Uh, it was an ep it's an epic. It's like seven and a half, seven minutes long. And I thought I heard some strings in there, like a violins or a quartet or something. It was a good crescendo. Good crescendo. Um, it's about a guy who tries to get his female friend to come to Jesus, mm -hmm. but she doesn't. Oh, she does, and then she comes out of it and doesn't do it, and yeah. doesn't. Uh, my third favorite was Rock Problems. Uh, I like the keyboards, the drums, the guitar solo, the lyrics. Uh, the lyrics especially because it's like, you know, I can't deal with your rock problems. That was the entire thing. Like the girlfriend talking to the rocker saying, I don't know what to do with you. I don't yeah. know why the girlfriend's talking like that, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, what would you, you give the album as a whole? I'd give it a B plus. Um, I, I like the music. Good, strong album. Probably the, the strongest would be the lyrics. Yeah, same here. I agree. I give it a B plus too. All right. Next. next. 
So the second album we're going to review today is uh, The Suburbs by Arcade Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, what, were, what were your thoughts of the, uh, uh, the album, Dylan? Definitely a lot of hype about this album. It's very anticipatory. I was really looking forward to this. I mean, I got, you know, I got Funeral and uh, Neon Bible, which I should have gotten before, but I never did. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what were your thoughts? <sighs> yeah, it was... It, it deserves the hype, I think. Um, it's, like you said... Um, you talked to me before, it was, it's a very rich album, which very well describes it, like this layers of piano, on synth, on guitar, on t close, tight harmonies, and just that beat in the background, it's like a layer cake. And the bass. Of, and the bass, it's like a layer cake of, of awesome music. I love that, layer cake of awesome. Oh, now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what were your, anything else um, you have to say? Yeah, it's well, like, definitely, um, uh, the lyrics, the theme of this, it's very top, mm. Less topical than Gogo Bordello, but it's kind of the themes of like the suburbs, obviously, in the city, and how they kind of like it's kind of like a soul, how they kind of wear on your soul a bit. And you can say, well, guys, this has been talked about a lot. Isn't this about what rock is a major theme of rock? Well, yes, but the sound not this way. No, the sound of this is just very different. They come from this like from the opposite angle, I guess you could say, and they're just like actively rebellion. I guess it, it, it's kind of it's kind of like what my brother says, you know, uh, conforming. To, it's like uh, the idea of conforming to to, to not conformity, conformity. right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so is that it? you could, I mean, it's definitely it's indie rock, but they're rocking. They're definitely they're it's actually well, you know. You, Define indie. Um, I mean, because like right. you know, they were at the top of the chart, right, the top of the Billboard charts. They're about as popular as we can get. Indie rock. rock. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, How about you? I thought it was amazing. It's very lyrically based. Yes. yes. This is a def. This is totally. It's really hard to listen to it and not. Like you know, it, it you know you don't hear it all the first time. You really want to get swept up in the music, yeah. and not the lyrics. But I mean, it is really lyrically based. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go, you know, actually go online and look at the lyrics, or open the, or open the, uh, you know, front book, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that you can read the lyrics, and it's f amazing. Yeah. And uh, like and some, I don't like, uh, especially as I, I liked it in Sprawl too, especially mm -hmm. as you know, mountains. Uh, I'm sorry, malls are being mountains. Yeah. The symbolism of you know, of looking out into nature and seeing malls yeah. as mountains. You can never escape the city. That yeah. was really good. Uh, there were a bunch of other ones that I can't remember off the top of my head that were especially good. Like especially actually, I like Half Life Two. That was uh, my second favorite. Uh, it had about you know going. It was about going back home. After the after the uh, market crash of two thousand eight, it can be construed that way. Oh, that's that's what I thought. That's what I thought it was about. <laughs> you know, and uh, so yeah. Yeah. Um, do, what were your three favorite songs? Four, four, three or four favorite songs. Four definitely this album. Hard to pick, so I chose four. Uh, one, City with No Children by far. This guitar riff at the beginning just kind of stuck in my head, and I like it. Now. Uh, uh, two would be Rococo. I like the chorus, especially in this one. Rococo, Rococo, Rococo. Kind of, kind of a lot more, uh, you know, repetitive or silly. I, I guess you could say it's. It compares like modern, the modern generation to like animals. You can feed them, and they look wild, but they're tame. Um, three would have to be mm. Sprawl. Two, like you said, I love the metaphor of nature is basically this the city now that you can never escape. Uh, kind of claustrophobic. And four would probably be Suburban War. My favorite line in this album is, and now the music has divided us into tribes, or divides us into tribes. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the idea of that. This album is very interconnected, interwoven. At least three songs have two parts, two songs dedicated to them. They're that large. Half-Light half 2, uh, the Sprawls, the Sprawl and, one, and, the Sprawl suburbs. and the Suburbs. And uh, Suburban War? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even in the other songs, they really connect. The lyrics definitely mesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you asking what my, th my four favorite songs are? Yes. All right. Uh, my first one is Month of May. The great beat, the guitars were a fire on that one. It made me go up, wanted to go up and dance, but you know, the most big like that, yeah, you don't need to dance. Uh, the second one was a Half Light 2. I already said that, you know, everything got turned up, the volume and the, the reverb and everything about the guitars. The beat was fantastic, and I already mentioned about the other the lyrics. My third was City of No Children, which Dylan mentioned, and my fourth was Sprawl, which Dylan Sprawl Two, which Dylan mentioned again. Mm -hmm. What would you give the What would you give the uh, album as a whole? I know you were debating this, yes. but what did you decide on? I give it an A minus. It was a good <coughs> album, a very good album. It's not uh, the songs were good, but they weren't. They were more the good that I just like listened to them. 
occasionally. Not like the songs that really get caught in my head. Definitely there are songs like that. So do No Children Rococo probably be my two or three. But the rest of the songs were kind of on the same level, I thought, of just being really good. Um, it's well constructed that... You know, screw it. I'm giving it an A. Wow! Just for... just. That was out of nowhere? No, no, no. I give it an A. You're describing why you were giving it an A, then you said, oh, I'm no, giving it an A. No, I really respect, especially the way they can... This is like a cathedral in the way they constructed the lyrics. It's very well planned. No, I, 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 I give it an A. I give it an A, too. Yeah, just right. because. Next. Next. Well, that will wrap it up for us today. Thank you to our viewers, our subscribers, our fans on Facebook. We have about 301 fans. Uh, Don't forget to send in those requests. And, of course, email mepodradioyahoo.com, which is going to be somewhere, like, right here. I don't know where. It wasn't last time. Sorry. It was, oh, that was your fault. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, tune in next time to see our two of And the cups, too. See you next time.